What's going on guys? My name is Elden Hero and welcome to episode 7 of my Leicester City career mode. We're starting this episode off with some action at the King Power Stadium against West Bromwich Albion and this is quite an interesting game because you'll see a snapshot of the league table on your screen any second now and you'll see that West Brom are actually right next to us in the league and there's only goal difference in it that's keeping us ahead of them. So uh, it is going to be quite an interesting clash in the uh, kind of the top of the mid table which is a very strange position for us to be in but we'll talk about that a little bit down the line in this episode because uh, because of some things that come to light, I guess. But um, I want to say there's going to be no second episode of this today because I'm actually going to be uploading a new series, which hopefully you guys enjoy. That's going to be later on, something completely different, um, of which there's n been nothing like it on my channel ever. But if you guys want to leave a like on the video now anyway to support the series, that would be much appreciated. And uh, as always, I have a question at the start of this episode as you see us applying some pressure to West Brom. Nothing concrete early on, but uh, some good chances nonetheless. But anyways, my question is, who do you guys think is going to be the top goal scorer in the Premier League this season? Because Diego Costa appears to be the obvious favourite at the moment. But uh, you've also got players like Falcao who have just joined the Premier League. And even Danny Welbeck onto Arsenal. I know a lot of people would probably slate me for even suggesting that he could be the top goal scorer. And he probably won't this season. In fact, I'd say he definitely won't. But you know, um, if they could turn him into the type of poacher that they're looking for, I think Welbeck could come really good for Arsenal. But um, on your screen right now, uh, West Brom are on the attack and they've just hit the crossbar in the 17th minute or the post rather but we come up to the 21st minute with Sessegnon coming down the right hand side he has the options in the middle and he takes it around two defenders before playing a ball in low across the pitch and Liam Moore puts it into his own net as I score my first own goal of the series. And I have to be honest, I was obviously trying to hit this over the bar. But it was more of a like knee-jerk reaction to a dangerous pass. And that resulted in us conceding completely against the run of play. West Brom's second chance of the game is all that it was. And we came forward immediately after with Mackay Steven hitting his shot just wide. Which I thought was very, very unfortunate. But we come into the second half with our heads held high. Searching for the equaliser that we deserved. And Dave Nugent gets the ball. Takes it round every player in his wake before firing it into the back of the net and equalizing for us and continuing his impressive goal scoring record collecting his fourth goal in five games which I think is a is a really good return considering that was one thing that we were missing from the season was striker consistency and we finally seem to have found it with Dave Nugent because Yuloa or sorry Yujoa wasn't really hitting the heights that we'd hoped he would achieve and Chris Wood hasn't been impressive in the league whenever he's come on but I uh, brought on Jamie Vardy in the 61st minute just to see if he could make any kind of an impact and um uh, obviously Cambiasso has to come off in pretty much every game because of his fitness but Vardy picks the ball up in the 62nd minute and starts charging at the West Brom defence getting around, well not around Lescott but getting the better of him for pace before unleashing a shot that was saved by the goalkeeper and then we come up to the 78th minute with Mile clearing the ball up towards the uh, the West Brom striker, it's won by I think it was Liam Moore and the ball comes to Mares who plays it to Vardy who plays it to Jeffrey Schlupp who has a look up and shoots from distance and look at that for a ridiculous goal, what the hell is happening Happening with that, it's such a ridiculous bend on it. It had that sort of, um, I don't know, it was a crazy kind of a curve. But I find it even more bizarre that Myhill couldn't even get a touch on that ball because it seemed like it was in prime position for the goalkeeper to at the very least parry it away. I know it wasn't really the best conditions for a goalkeeper to be catching the ball, but look at this. He should be doing something with that. Like, he's off his line and he's not really in a good position to uh, to do anything, but like, just punch the ball. That, that's such a shame for West Brom that we took the lead in that kind of a fashion. But uh, West Brom immediately laid down a sort of a siege on our defence and some terrible defending from Liam more um, sees Varela Sylvester Varela get in and capitalize on it by finishing and making it to all which was just so good and, and it just like it rounded off what was a horrible performance from Liam Moore not really a horrible performance I guess that's harsh but a horrible day for him as he scores an own goal and makes the mistake that leads to West Brom's equalizer so a two all draw in a game that we arguably could have and should have won but here's a better look at the league table for you guys Chelsea have caught up with us as expected and they're now a point ahead of us although we would be up there in fourth place if we won or sorry fifth place if we won that game uh, but we'd be ahead of Arsenal and Chelsea and Man City which would be kind of stupid but uh, the way the league table is shaping up does sort of show us why we got good results against Everton Chelsea and a good performance against Arsenal because they're actually underperforming in the league and I know a lot of people will say like that's not realistic or whatever but you have to understand that this is a video game and sometimes the league table does produce some some very strange things 
But um, a look on your screen now shows the squad report. Esteban Cambiaso still in decline everywhere but his technicals, which I guess is something that I'm okay with. Um, it's just, like he's he's a lot older than Wes Morgan, I suppose. But um, our squad on paper is so bad. Like we do not have good players at all. I'm amazed that we've managed to maintain such a high league position. Um, it's kind of been very very unexpected on my part. Like I didn't expect us to be doing this well at all. I did actually expect it to be a relegation dogfight, but uh, it hasn't come to that, and I haven't really felt the need to advance the difficulty yet. But um. Like I said, uh, I will talk about that in a little bit. Our next game is going to be at St. Mary's against Southampton, and it's, obviously it's away from home. Now, Southampton, historically in FIFA, are a team that I always have struggled against. I think I probably played against them maybe 20 times in the entirety of FIFA 14, um, and I lost or drew most of them. They were incredibly difficult to break down, and I thought that that would be even more amplified in this game because of the fact that it's difficult to break any team down. We stuck with our 4-5-1. We went with Mares and Albrighton on either wing, with Mackay Stephen playing just behind the informed David Nugent and inside three minutes Nugent actually got the better of Yoshida uh, evading his slide tackle before firing straight at the goalkeeper and then you're going to see uh, the defender clear it for no reason whatsoever he had plenty of time to pass it but that resulted in a corner for us which Mares swings in and I used the crowd the keeper option again which led to a goal from David Nugent as he nets his fifth goal in six games amazing form from the England international who actually has a hundred percent goal scoring record for England but don't look that up because it'll be less impressive when you actually see what stat it is but uh, Southampton responded immediately with Reed on the edge of the box he plays it to Mane who gets into a good position to cross it into Shane Long who equalizes with a magnificent header into the back of the net or at least he thought he had done so until the linesman stuck his flag up and said it was offside I actually thought that it was on because I was playing without sound so I was like kind of gutted when that happened I was cursing and everything but uh, thankfully it was offside and then Mackay Stephen had a shot saved in the 16th minute but we came forward three minutes later with Drinkwater on the ball he finds Mackay Stephen in a good position he gets a shot blocked and then gets taken out by the defender according to the referee which resulted in a free kick in a good position for us and Albrighton stands over it I hadn't taken a free kick from this type of position in FIFA 15 but this one went into the back of the net to make it 2-0 for us with an amazing curl just so far away from the goalkeeper there was nothing he could have done it was a pretty Christine uh, perfect precise free kick from Mark Albright in making it 2-0 to us and there's another question for you guys in all honesty how many free kicks have you scored like this so far in FIFA 15 because I have heard a lot of people say that it's easier and I've never been good at scoring free kicks at all in any FIFA like I think in FIFA 14 I probably scored maybe 10 in the entirety of it um, in career mode anyways it's different in ultimate team but um, a very very nice free kick into the far corner there and this angered Southampton even more and they responded immediately again with Reed playing it to Shane Long who finds Mane a very good combination up front and the ball gets headed towards Shane Long but his volley goes so far over the it probably went out of the stadium but in the 34th minute we came forward once again with Cambiasso on the ball playing it to Mackay Steven who has a look up for options to see if anyone is making a run but decides to continue his own run before running in around the defenders and hitting a right footed shot into the top corner of the net to make it 3-0 inside 35 minutes and it was all just falling apart for Southampton and I could not believe how well I was doing in that game uh, such a ridiculous goal as well the goalkeeper didn't react Southampton came forward and they got a corner kick in the 41st minute from which they did manage a decent enough chance with Morgan Schneider and his shot was saved Shane Long's header hit the crossbar and it just was not going to be his day uh, the second half was a very very quiet one up until the 89th minute when Andy King plays a true ball into Jeffrey Schlupp who takes on Alder Vireld or however you pronounce his name and he gets into a position to score and this time I used a finesse shot because I have been reading your comments every single one of them um, and a lot of people were telling me to finesse it instead so that's what I did this time and that resulted in an unbelievable 4-0 victory for us away from home so it's interesting how we ended the last episode with our worst game so far and we've ended this one with our best game so far but I think a lot of you guys will agree with this that um, I think it is now time to move to legendary difficulty I don't think I can continue to play with Leicester City and beat a team like Southampton away from home with a 4-0 margin so um, the next episode as you can see from the calendar on the top of the screen there we've got Southampton in two days 
And that doesn't really give us a lot of time to prepare. And Nugent and Mackay Steven did play the 90 minutes. So they're not going to be available. So we're going to have a weakened team against Sunderland. So whatever way of looking at it, it's going to be a difficult game. And it's going to be even more difficult when I play it on Legendary. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to play on Legendary just to see how we get on for that one game. And if it's really bad, I can change it back to World Class. But I'd rather not uh, choose between the two. I'd rather just stick to one. So we might just stick with Legendary. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think anyways. But that's the end of this episode. Hopefully. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a like. It would be much appreciated. And tune in later for my new series. You guys actually might really like it. But uh, yeah, I've been Elden Hero. Thanks for watching.